is 1.30 p.m. Do a quick roll call, Ms. Zolotel. Present. Okay, Mr. Weddleton. Nothing for Mr. Whittleton. Uh, Mr. Trombley? Here. Okay. And I think Ms. Pokin is gone. Ms. Heil, are you here today? Ms. Pokin's on. Oh, Emma? I'm sorry. Emma, are you on? I am. Good afternoon. Thanks. Oh, we are. Okay. And I think Cindy is also here. Cindy is also. Okay. So we have four people present. So we have a quorum. Okay. Let's see, Aaron, will you please do the public involvement announcements? Uh, yes, all EMS committee meetings are open to the public and the public is provided an opportunity to comment at each meeting. Business items are first presented on by staff or consultant and the committee will have a chance for discussion. After that, the public will be invited to provide formal comment and then the item will come back before the committee for final discussion and action. As a reminder, individuals who wish to provide comment on an agenda item will have three minutes to do so and we will be timing and providing that information. Okay. Thank you. Rick. Okay. Moving on to an approval of the agenda. Do we have an approval agenda by anyone today? Moved and approved. Thank you. And was that was that Emma? Was that you or was that Meg? Sorry, that was Meg. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zolotel. So we have the Move to approve in a second. Any changes to the agenda? Okay, any objections to adopting the agenda? All right, hearing none, the agenda is approved. Okay, item number four for the agenda. Item number four, we have before us the minutes from December 16th, 2021 for approval. Do we have a motion on the minutes for December 16th? Moved to approve. Mr. Trauma, thank you. Zalatel second. Zalatel second, thank you. And let the record show that Mr. Wilton joined us. Okay, any, moved to second, any changes or discussion on the minutes for December 16th? Okay, any objections to approving the minutes as noted? Hearing no comment on, but I could. Oh. Um, Take the stairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a comment on the minutes? Yeah. For December 16th. Okay. You know, just, um, you know, so I wasn't here, but I went through them. And just to make clear, there was a, uh, we amended the code to make life safety roads a uh, area wide function because there was some discussion about getting the match for Hillside. So that's in there, and that's where we did a bond to get the match. So that's available for um, any time we need it. For that. It was a little bit, maybe, maybe you discussed that, but it was a little clear. So okay. I'd not recommend any change, just, just clarification. Sharing the information. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, again, any objection to change to, uh, to approval of the minutes? All right. Hearing none, the December 16th, 2021 minutes are approved. All right, on to the action items. We have action item 5A, uh, Citizens Advisory Committee, District 5 appointment. Aaron, will you give us some information? Yes, thank you very much. So we have a seat open on our Community Advisory Committee. It is District 5 open public seat. So staff put out a call for uh, nominations, uh, applications for this position for 30 days. We received three applications. Staff reviewed those three applications, and based on what was submitted, uh, staff is recommending Mike Rayburn to fill the open seat. So just quick background. Uh, Mr. Rayburn has been a resident of Alaska for 24 years and has lived in Northeast Alaska for 21 of those years. Uh, he's a frequent car commuter, occasional bike commuter, trail user, and he's generally aware of transportation issues in the area. Uh, he does come with an extensive uh, biological sciences, wildlife biologist background. Um, and if you read through his resume, you can see he has a, a number of publications related to the subject that he's put out there. So it's a pretty extensive resume. Uh, Mr. Rayberg would like to help inform transportation planning for the municipality of Anchorage through AMATS to discuss and advise on transportation projects 
that can help ease travel across town, serve all of our communities, and improve safety for children in neighborhoods like his own, and to learn what goes into planning for transportation in Anchorage. So based on his extensive background and the information he submitted to us, staff is recommending Mike Rayberg fill the position for the MTC on the CAC. And the TAC had extensive discussion on this and they also approved, recommend, uh, they also recommended uh, Mike Rayberg to fill that seat. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Um, from the policy committee, any comments or discussion on, on this nomination? Mr. Weddleton? Uh, yeah, thanks. I, it seems like a good choice. Is, um, does the CAC, have any discussion about who's chosen? No, not according to the operating agreement. It's all based on the policy committee. They can help us find individuals if needed, um, and reach out and provide information, but it ultimately is through TAC and policy committee. And, and then are there criteria? There's no criteria set out about looking at it. It's just staff meeting to kind of go over it. So that's DOT staff and AMS staff uh, that talk through it. Okay, I see here now. I believe Mike Rayberg is on the phone. Mike, are you there? Uh, yeah, good afternoon. I'm saying it because I know I'm nominated, so if anyone had any questions. I guess it's nice that you're here. <laughs> it shows you care. Um, but I appreciate your interest in that. Um, <laughs> it's very important. So. Yeah. yeah, certainly. All right, uh, any other questions or comments from the policy committee on Mr. Rayberg's advancement? Okay, we're going to move on to questions from the or comments from the public. Uh, please remember you have three minutes to make your comments. Um, or so are, with that, are there any questions from the public on this matter? Okay. Not hearing anybody from the public. Uh, Chris, are you seeing anything? No, there's not anything. I think nope. it was typing, but I can't. I don't see anything that There's nothing in the chat. Or... Nothing in the chat. Okay, so we'll uh, move on. So, what is the will of the committee regarding the nomination of Mr. Raber to the community? Is that move to approve or move to nominate? It'd be moved to approve. I'll second. Mr. Will. Second. Mr. Mr. Trombley seconded. Any objections to approving the motion? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Raber, congratulations. You're on the Community Advisory Committee. Yes. Thank you very much. Look forward to the first meeting. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on to action item 5B, TIP Administrative Modification Number 6. Aaron, what say you? <laughs> So everyone knows the tip. Uh, we do these periodic kind of adjustments and changes as time goes on to keep the program balanced, to move projects forward, projects change. So really quickly, we have a few changes here that we're recommending. The first is to, an update to Table 2 roadway under the pavement replacement program. Some additional funding is being added to this, pro this project to start another pavement replacement program and to help balance the budget or the, the overall program. Table 3, non-motorized. There's a quick update for the Downtown Trails Connection project. Currently shows $100,000 in right-of-way funding in 2022. However, as that project is moving forward, they realize they don't need the funding in 2022. They'll need it in 2023 or later. So uh, you can see it was 100,000 and we're zeroing out that 100,000 and putting nothing in there. It's moved out to beyond 2022. The project is still being worked on. They're just not at this phase of the project uh, and don't have need for this money yet. Table four, plans and studies. There are three updates that are happening here. The first is um, we're moving $100,000 into the AMATS MTP project. This is for additional modeling work to be done. This $100,000 is expected to go towards a strategic planning model effort. So we have our current TDM model, transportation demand management model. It's very specific and precise and takes a long time to get outputs out of it. A strategic planning model is a, a little more higher level planning effort model to where we can put in planning things like uh, VMT tax or parking pricing, for example, and see what that does to the network. Um, it's the first of its kind for AMATS, but it is commonly used throughout other MPOs in the country. So we are trying to upgrade ourselves into the future. 
Next, we have made a couple of uh, denotions in our tables about the SIRSA funding. This is the COVID relief funding that is available to AMATS. Uh, this funding requires no match. And at this time, we are recommending two uses of it, $100,000 for the modeling effort that I just spoke of, and then $250,000 of it for the AMAT safety plan. As everyone knows, uh, uh, studies and plans often have a difficult time coming up with the match. And so we're hoping that this can help offset, offset that and move those projects forward quicker. And the last item I wanna talk about regarding the studies and plans is 92nd Avenue Extension Reconnaissance Study. We, uh, staff is recommending a change to the termini of this project. Currently it goes from Old Seward Highway to King Street. Uh, based on discussions with the project team, and you know, DOT, Muni, and AMAT staff, it would be better if this was extended to C Street instead of King Street. So it adds a smaller, uh, an extra uh, portion to the study. So the final one would go from Old Seward Highway to C Street. And that is not coming, the, the change to 92nd Avenue is not coming with an increase of funding. It's just a term nine change. <coughs> So that's all the changes. This was reviewed and recommended for approval by the TAC at their January 13th meeting with no changes. Thank you, Rick. Uh, any questions or comments from the policy committee on this tip? Uh, Mr. Yeah, yeah, a couple of things just for So the 92nd half, so that you got a railroad in the way, and that's so you have a quarter million. So the study, that's not a lot of money to design a tunnel or something. What do you get out of the study? So this study is going to be looking at kind of what it would take and the challenges associated with extending 92nd Avenue. When we built the 2019 through 2022 tip, the 92nd Avenue extension construction project scored high enough to get included in. But after discussion with the railroad and DOT and the Muni, it was realized there's a lot of challenges in there. So instead of moving forward on a construction project where we there's a lot of unknowns, specifically how much it's going to cost, uh, a reconnaissance study was added in. Part of what this reconnaissance study will do is identify and highlight these challenges. It could make some recommendations to look at on how to overcome them, not make a recommendation on a final, this is what it shall be, because it still has to go through the construction design, need by everything like that. And it can kind of give a better idea of magnitude of what we're talking about, about cost. Is it 100 million, 20 million? What is our range there? Think of it like a miniature planning environmental linkage study. Very tiny. <laughs> I think and it's like 15 minutes. <laughs> and please note, this does not mean we will lead immediately into a construction project. It's just a study, and then decisions will be have to made if eventually we want to move into a construction project. Like a feasibility study. Yes. That's probably good. So I got uh, one more. Sure. Okay, so on this last one here, AMAT safety plan, what is CRSA? Sir says the COVID Relief Response Act that was recently passed. AMAT gets about $11 million from that. And so we're recommending, so there are limitations to that funding on what it can be spent on, as well as it has to be put towards projects that are in an existing TIP or you have to add a project to the TIP. Right now, staff's recommending we just put it towards existing projects and then the new TIP we're building on, we can work together and assign it to new projects if needed. Okay, so in red, you have the 250,000. Is that, should that be on that line or what is that refer to? Because red means a change, right? Is that yeah, we're not actually making a change into the funding amount itself. It's staying at $250,000. So where's the, what's the red 250 on that last line? Uh, because the total is being changed. Basically what we have to be able to show is that this funding from SIRSA is not impacting our allocation, our fiscal constraint, and so when we use SIRSA funding for it, it takes it away from our STBG allocation. And so basically it's just updating the total at the bottom. So that was zero? No, it was 600,000, but because we took out the 250 from the safety plan and the 100 from the MTP, it brought it down to only 250 is coming out of our allocation for the 92nd Avenue extension study. That the zero was not. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Anything else, John? No, thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the committee on the TIP amendment? Okay. Hearing none, any questions or comments from the public on the uh, TIP administrative modification number six? Okay. Hearing none, what is the will of the committee? 
Move to approve. Okay. Second, Zalatel. Second. Okay. Are there any objections to approving the motion as it stands? All right. Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to are there any other action items there? No, there's not. Okay. Moving on to agenda item 6A 2023 to 2026 TIP nominations. Uh, Aaron. Yes. Hello. I just wanted to give a quick update on where we're at with this and kind of talk about some stuff that's been going on. So as you know, we have the TIP nominations for the new 2023 through 2026 TIP out. Uh, the comment period closes February 14th, and we've actually been getting a lot of interest in this. So um, staff has attended the FCC meeting to talk about this. They had some questions, and so I attended and gave a brief overview of what the TIP nominations are, the different nominations that they can apply projects to, and kind of what the overall process is. We also attended the Roadmap to Vital Safe Anchorage group. Uh, they asked us to attend to provide uh, background information on the TIP nominations as well, so I attended that, and it was a good, quick update to them because they want to uh, submit some nominations. And then next week or the week after, I'll be attending a quick meeting with the Parks Foundation to talk about the nominations because they have questions as well. Um, we've also gotten a bunch of other questions from individuals about who can nominate, what's eligible. So I just wanted to go over a quick reminders, a quick couple of reminders. One project that are nominated need to be within the AMATS boundary. And you can find that boundary map on our website. In general, it does not include Indian Bird and Girdwood as they are outside of our boundary. Um, our federal dollars are not eligible for private roadways, driveways, or private property. It must be spent on public rights of way. And you do not have to be a member of a special group or committee to nominate a project. And waiting is not assigned based on who submitted the nomination. Everyone is eligible, any group, and we will work with those groups to help submit nominations if they have any questions. We've already gotten those, so we're helping those groups as needed. And lastly, uh, the nominations are not weighed based on the number of them that are submitted. So one project receiving 100 nominations will not give it more score. Um, I would ask that where possible, we try and limit the duplications of projects as that will cause a lot of uh, uh, work for staff. However, if people want to submit duplicated projects, that is fine. We will work with that and go forward. And that is all I have. Okay, thank you, Ron. Any uh, questions or comments from the committee on this subject? Okay. Did you go to the Federation of Community Councils? Yes. yes. They, they actually reached out and asked uh, about it, and so we attend, I attended. Anything else, John? No. no. Okay. Any, any of the other committee members have a comment on this subject? Okay. Any questions or comments from the public on this subject? All right, hearing none, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, anything else on updates or plans? That's it. Okay. Uh, actually, really quickly, it's not on the agenda, but I keep forgetting to add it. The, just a heads up, we do have a work session on Friday for the MTP performance measures criteria. Uh, we sent out the information to all the committee members. That will be recorded and put online for individuals who can't make it, who want to listen. Um, so, uh, just a heads up as well, expect to see that at the February meeting where we'd be asking for a release for 30 days for public comment on those items. Thank you. All right. Did item 7A, advisory committee term limits. I think this is a special request. Aaron, are you going to give us some insight into yes. that item? So, I believe this came about by Mr. Weddleton asking kind of where we're at with committee members, what their term limits are. So before you um, on the screen, you can see we did develop a list of our three subcommittees, the BPAC, CAC, and FAC, and all the current committee members and what their first appointment dates are. Um, as you can see, there are a number of individuals who have been on there since kind of the very beginning, 2015 or earlier, and then they have not been reappointed to their positions. Um, staff is working to bring those reappointments through the TAC and policy committee within the next few months to get us up to speed and get everybody reappointed and to ensure that in the future we track this better. Um, just as a note, some members may exceed their three year or their two term limits. And the reason for that is because they are the only representative from their group. 
So for example, the uh, Alaska Trucking Association only has a few individuals. Joe Michelle is really the only individual who can attend and be part of our FAC. So he may have more than one term limit or two term limits on there. So uh, we will work with those groups to try and rotate individuals where possible, but I just wanted to give you all a heads up. And that's all I had on it. Thank you. All right. Mr. Wilson? Um, <coughs> but is, is that, so we have these, uh, I guess two questions. But one is, what does the policy say? Do we need to revise that to say that regarding term limits, that, that if you can't find anyone in that category, we need to extend it because we, we should make our rules say what we do. Yeah, I think for the bio, I think for the committee bylaws, they do not currently talk about individuals or groups that have limited numbers who can attend. So we may have to work on some language to add in there about exceptions to that two term limit. Uh, that is something that I'm planning on working with Christine Schutte on. Uh, we're going to see if other MPOs have something similar. If not, we'll have to develop our own language and bring that forward. OK, yeah, I recommend that. And then. It, the cities use an onboard to track boards and commissions. Are you using that? No. Yeah. Look into that because it is right there online. And, and it, um, I think once it's up to date, it'll stay up to date. And I know the mayor's working really hard to, uh, to get it up to date. Have you looked at You just community.org, Google, or search for boards, and it'll get you there pretty quick. But it's, it's tremendous. I can look into it, but I'm a little cautious about it because our committees are not part of the municipal system, and I there's already confusion as is regarding that. So um, I can I can look into it some more and see what it is, but it may just be something we have to put on our own website and kind of keep track of so people can follow along. And we just need to do that. So. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you maybe use the same program to just put it on the AMAP website. Okay. Thank it's you. Been real helpful for me. Thanks. Any other comments from the committee on this subject? Okay. Any public comments on the subject? All right. Well, hearing none, um, moving to item eight. Are there any committee comments in general to add from anybody regarding anything about any subject? Because I always have some comments unless somebody else does. Um, for those of you who just got a little bit of a DOT update, uh, Jim Amundsen, who it was always his fault. Well, it's no longer his fault. He's now moved on to AMTHC. So Sean Baskey will be your uh, chain of blame for Department of Transportation Highway Design Group Chief. So Mr. Baskey would be happy to entertain all and any of your questions in the future. Charlie Wagner, our MNO Chief, is moving on. His last day is Monday. Uh, acting in his place for now until we get a replacement will be Varel Nickerson. So he will be our maintenance and operations acting chief for a while. Um, hopefully some of you have seen the governor's go bond. There's a couple of projects in there that might be of interest. To the city, uh, you met access is uh, is has some funding in there, as as do a few other some projects. So I encourage you to review the governor's geo bond funding uh, for more information. Uh, governor's sewer highway safety initiative. If you didn't catch his address back in December, he has asked the department to reconstruct between Indian and Potter uh, Rabbit Creek Road. So we're essentially looking at connecting those two four lanes with a four lane highway. So big project. Will take several years just to get the environmental clearances done on it. But with over 20,000 cars a day south of Anchorage, um, it is one of our higher, highest level safety corridors because of the accidents and the data. So, um, in very poor need of, uh, of an improvement there and a very expensive one given the train. So, the governor has put that as a priority. So, we will be looking to move forward on that in the next few years. So, really excited about that. Um, also, a couple other side notes tonight at 430 begins the Seward Glen Planning Environmental Linkage uh, public meeting. Um, you can go to their website, just Google Seward Glen Pell, and you'll find their website. It's a WebEx at 430 this afternoon. Uh, so please um, encourage everybody to participate in that if they're, if they're interested in it. Um, Senator Begich has reached out to us uh, regarding the Seward Glen Pell and has asked if AMAT's funding can be used for uh, land use studies adjacent to that corridor. Um, generally speaking, the project as it sits today was not scoped to incorporate land use planning studies or the costs associated with those studies. Generally, um, 
and corridors adjacent to state systems, any any second or third order effects adjacent to the road are the responsibility of the municipality or the borough that owns and operates those areas, such as a land use planning study or other road improvements. Um, however, we did tell Senator Begich we would look into it and see if it could be determined eligible. If it was determined eligible, it would require the policy community to go back and rescope the whole thing and consider it for eligibility and tip. So just a heads up as to Senator Bigich's desires with, that regard, with regard to that project. So other than that, that's the news from DOT. Any other last minute comments? Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. This is Ms. Salatel. Um, I just wanted to highlight an issue that we put in the legislative package from the municipality, um, and it is to try to work um, together with DOT and the state um, to figure out um, if there's an option or ability to do um, safety corridors within the urban area. I know that's something they're available. Most common one known is the one uh, on the way to Girdwood, um, but as something to maybe address some of the safety issues on high volume um, roads, uh, state roads within the municipality where we've had quite a few vehicle collisions, um, most notably uh, Tudor Road um, from old, or I'm sorry, New Seward up through Elmore and then uh, the Muldoon Curve. Um, I understand the Highway Safety Improvement Program, the HSIP, um, is doing some lighting upgrades, but I'm hopeful that maybe we can find a way to work together to look at some other interim tools to address these issues, um, especially since any redesign or reconstruction of these roads would be ma massive undertakings, both in terms of time and uh, resources, particularly with a fiscally constrained program. So I just wanted to highlight that and look forward to some conversation and partnership. Thank you. No, that's a good comment. Um, the, the state has four safety corridors in existence right now. They're all within Central Region. One is the Parks Highway north of Wasilla. The second one is Kinnikus Bay Road uh, coming out of Wasilla. The third is Sterling Highway down between Sterling and Soldatna. And the fourth is the Seward Highway south of Anchorage. So we're just wrapping up this year. Parks Phase 3 that takes us out to Big Lake Road as a divided four lane. With the completion of that project, that safety corridor will almost assuredly be decommissioned. Um, KGB will be bidding the first phase of that project um, this summer and once completed with the second phase that will also decommission that safety corridor the third corridor the sterling highway between sterling and seward we already we just completed the nepa document on the extension of that four lane into soldatna um, with that project we're proposing a design build this year that would eliminate that third safety corridor and with the governor's focus on the safety corridor highway initiative uh, Seward Highway uh, Safety Corridor Highway Initiative. Um, once completed, that would also eliminate that as the final safety corridor in the state. To your point, Ms. Salatel, um, I think it maybe it would be helpful to have Scott Thomas, our traffic engineer, come to the AMATS Policy Committee and just briefly discuss uh, what you brought to the table in terms of concerns about safety corridors within an urbanized area. Um, I don't have an answer for your question now, but if that information brief from Mr. Thomas, our regional safe, traffic safety guy, would be of value to you, we could certainly set that up. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I've been in conversation with Mr. Thomas, um, and he's laid out the steps it would take. And this is why it was placed in our legislative program, is that there are many steps to take in order to make this possible. Um, and we want to make sure that it would be a joint effort between um, our partners at the state and the municipality. Um, so I, I, if, if the AMATS thought, the policy committee thought it would be helpful for everyone to get on the same page about it, I would enjoy the briefing again. Um, it's terribly complex and there's a lot of steps to be taken, um, but um, really open to exploring this and hopefully um, we can maybe make a little bit of headway. Okay. We'll pass Mr. Up. Chairman, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, just just uh, you know, Meg asked the question if if we'd be, be open to it, and I would be. I'd be interested to hear more about uh, safety corridor in an urban area. Sure, sounds good. We'll, we'll coordinate with uh, Scott Thomas. Aaron, would you put that on your to-do list and yep. reach out to Scott, and we'll see if we can get him 
available for a briefing. Yes. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Alatel. Any other committee comments? Okay. Very none. Any other, any public comments? All right. Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. Any objections to approving the motion? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned at 2.01 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.